because when the artist has it's something that nature gave it, you can't change it. You have to write songs around the artist. The artist doesn't have to pick you, you have to pick your artist. You can't change Dion or, or Mathis or any of that, but you can't change. You can change the uh, style, but you can't change the sound. But you will not change uh, nobody's sound. You change, uh, you just can't have something they're born with. You can't change the sound. That's the reason why they have things, auto tunes and things, because they're making, they're making a sound. You take them off the auto tune and they hear what they really sound like, they'll sound a little different. Are now recording. So without further ado, Mr. Tom Bell. Life is a song worth singing. Why don't you sing it? Life is a song worth singing. Why don't you sing it? You might not be an arranger, or you just might be. You might not be a songwriter, but you just might be. But the one thing we do have in common is you do have ears. And you know Johnny Mathis when you hear him. He was he was the what is the word quintessential singer of singers. That's the voice I always heard in my mind. I wanted to hear this guy. I wanted to record him. So when I got a hold of uh, of uh, Columbia CBS Columbia, I wanted to do it. And they said no, not not really. He, he's uh, what they were saying was uh, Tom Bell is, is uh, does black music. That's black music. I didn't know that. I thought, those <laughs> ones, I thought all those number ones were uh, in everyone's yard. I didn't know it was just black. Are you are you talking about the music I'm doing, or are you talking about the hue of my skin? Which one are you speaking of? Hmm. Because if you go by the hue of my skin, yes, I'm black, and so what's that mean? That has nothing to do with the music. The music has, is of no colors at all, period. So I tried my darnest. We tried, we tried for a year. Two years to get to get back. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get it. Finally... Finally, we got a hold of Clyde Davis. Yes. And so he gave him to me. And boy, oh boy, that, that's when I really, I was really hearing my hearing. I had finally reached the, the pinnacle, the apex, the top, the point, the, you name it. I reached up where I wanted to go. Got down to Madison. When I heard him sing the first time, boy, oh, sitting next to him on that piano. I said, oh, there it is. That's the voice. Wow. That's the voice. He would always be... Um, they go and try. Okay, let's try. He would never get. I, I would ask him to say anything. Anything you want, you want to do, Tom? Let's, let's give it a try. So, okay, let's go. I said, um, oh, I, I keep hearing you singing a little high. Mm. You seem to be singing higher than than necessary. You can do it, and you've been doing it, but it doesn't seem necessary that you have to do it. Let's see if we can't bring you down a little bit. And so I brought him down, and he was so happy. So I wrote the melody. And Creed wrote Life is a Song of Singing. She wrote, she wrote those lyrics, boy. So the engineer, I'll never forget him, is uh, uh, Don Murray. We used to call him Murray. He's fantastic. Uh, he was always quiet, never talked. Once I did the track, uh, he in turn got with the uh, synthesizers and the computer thing and, and put the whole front on it and did the editing digitally. With it, and uh, when he called me, he said, "Take a listen to this." I heard that. I said, Whoa! So what I did was, I I did something different. I did it motion picture style. I did the uh, the string part, the whole front of that part, separately from the song, and those other different parts. And he in turn digitally put them together and reversed them and did all kinds of stuff. I said, "Whoa, boy!" He took the strings and went forward, and he put them in, and he re-recorded them backwards, and he put them forward again. Oh uh-huh. man, was that fantastic! So that whole beginning was uh, was a Don Murray a creation. That was not mine. That was him. He was a little scared of it. He said, "Tom." Uh, I, I don't know if I agree. I don't you can sing this. Don't even don't even don't you start crying, get your body over there and, and, and sing that song. I don't I don't I don't with an artist, I don't give him no doubt, none. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't appear like that, I don't look like that, I don't sound like that, I don't give him that frightened look. No, no. No, you can do it. Believe me, you can get up there and do it. So I'll make you do it. <laughs> even okay. if I might say to myself, I don't know about this guy. No. He's going to do it. And he, he said, okay, okay, Tom, I'll go. He was always, he, he kept, he's the most, he was the most hardworking, appreciable guy. He never, ever, he had to work hard to get him to say he liked or disliked something. 
Mm. You have to do it. But he still wouldn't tell you whether he he disliked something. He, but he loved this. Oh man, he was just so happy. And he did it. He said, "I don't know. I, I want to try." Oh, you're gonna do it. Mm. First, first knocked him out. And when it was all over, with, the guy almost had tears in his eyes. He couldn't believe he had sung that song. The first, wow. I said, "Man, it was fantastic." He said, oh, "I can't believe this." I said, "Yes, you did, my man." I said, you don't have to do any more. This is it. One take, one take only. To this day, that was back in 1973, I believe. Mm -hmm. He still uses that song in his stage present. When, he, when, when you bring him on, ladies and gentlemen, this is Johnny Mathers. And that music comes on, he still uses that song.